Okay, in this video I'm going to demonstrate uh, the Cox um, regression uh, using uh, the Stata program. And uh, we essentially have survival data that we're going to be working from. The survival data is coming from this article by Luke and Homan, 1998. Um, it's uh, fabricated data, but uh, de definitely simulating uh, a, a good example of um, a circumstance where you might utilize uh, survival analysis. Um, and in particular using uh, Cox regression. So let's take a quick look at the data and review it. Uh, we're going to go under browse right here. You'll notice we have ID um, weeks is a time variable uh, essentially reflecting the time until the, uh, either the end of the observation period or uh, uh, observation of a, the terminal event. Uh, the event is uh, coded one for you know, the, the event was observed and a zero for a censored case. Um, so the data set that we have right here, we have individuals that are either in a detox group or were in a detox group and released or some other type of treatment uh, and released. So this is kind of looking at uh, the issue of um, alcohol relapse and the time until relapse. So what we have right here are all of these individuals who have uh, survival uh, data. Uh, the event variable is, re like I said, is reflecting essentially the observed relapse uh, and then the weeks is the time until relapse. So you'll notice that uh, person one uh, relapsed at week one, person two, uh, three relapsed at week two, uh, this person seven relapsed at week 27. You'll notice that down here we've got three censored observations um, essentially these three individuals uh, exhibited no relapse by the end of the observation period which was 30 weeks and so consequently they would be considered uh, censored. Um, that doesn't mean that they would never relapse only that uh, they were not observed to relapse during the period. Then we have um, essentially um, um, the treatment group and so you can see all of these individuals relapse at their respective weeks. You have uh, this person right here, uh, person 31, that uh, did not relapse by week 19 but uh, essentially that observation was lost uh, from the um, uh, from the data set as a result of you know perhaps that person um, uh, decided not to participate in the study anymore. They were lost to the re uh, researchers. So the researchers couldn't follow them throughout the entire period. And so as a result, uh, um, they would be uh, considered uh, censored as well. And then we also have some of these other individuals who by uh, 30 weeks um, were not observed to uh, have relapsed. So they were uh, given a, a value of zero on the event variable. So they were treated as censored. The group variable is, again, uh, which group the individuals were in prior to um, uh, the observation period. Uh, and so you have the detox individuals. Uh, they, they had been in a detox program versus some other type of treatment program. We also have a variable symptoms, which is reflecting level of psychological distress. Um, and this is a continuous measure. And then we also have AA, uh, whether or not they attended AA. Uh, after release from their uh, uh, treatment program. And so a uh, value of zero indicates that they did not attend AA. A value of one indicates that they did attend AA. So at this point, uh, we're going to run our analysis and we're going to, and, and keep in mind that uh, in the context of uh, Cox regression, what we're essentially doing is modeling predictors of the hazard uh, of relapse. Okay, and so um, so that's you know that really the dependent measure is essentially hazard for relapse. So what I'm going to do is go up here. Now the first thing you have to do when you're running uh, survival analysis is you have to let the program know that you are working with survival data. So we can do this through the menu option, going down to survival analysis, setup and utilities, and we can declare data to be survival time data. So I'm going to click on this. Uh, the time variable is weeks. The failure event is essentially going to be the vari variable, the failure variable is uh, essentially our censoring variable which is going to be event right here. And then we're going to indicate what the failure value is which is 1. Um, so essentially, you know, keep in mind that failure is not really reflecting 
negatively per negativity per se. Um, it's just the way that the, the terms are, are reflected um, in, in the program here and, and, and the survival analysis literature in general. Um, but nevertheless, the failure variable is essentially the censoring variable and the failure value is essentially the value associated with uh, observing uh, the, the terminal event, which in this case is uh, relapse. So next we'll click on OK and now we've established uh, to the program that we are working with survival data. Um, if we didn't want to go through the menu option we could just essentially uh, type this in this in information in in the command line. So I'll just type in ST set weeks. So ST set is the, is the command associated with setting the um, uh, the program for survival analysis uh, and then we follow it up with the time variable followed by comma then failure and then inside the parenthesis we're going to put the name of um, our censoring variable which happened to be event and then two equals and then one reflecting uh, the terminal event uh, the code for the terminal event which is uh, relapse um, so I'm going to hit enter and so there you go so now let's run a Cox regression so we're going to go to statistics go to survival analysis regression models and go to Cox proportional hazards model. Um, now uh, in the independent variables box we can either type it or we can use a little drop down here. Uh, so I'm going to select group, symptoms, and AA. Now group and AA are both technically uh, dichotomous variables uh, but uh, you know they're essentially dummy variables because they only have two values associated with them and they're both coded 0 and 1 and uh, so we don't really need to uh, treat them as factors we don't have to go through the factor option as we might uh, in other cases if we had more than two groups um, so I'm just gonna uh, just include these as is and uh, so we don't actually have to do anything else with those variables so uh, under reporting we you'll notice that uh, we have several options. Uh, one option right here is report coefficients, not hazard ratios. So the default, if we don't click on this, we're, we're going to get um, a reporting of hazard ratios, but I wanna get the regression coefficients first. So I'm gonna start with this, and then uh, we're gonna click on okay. And so you can see that we have our uh, regression results. First off, notice that we have a likelihood ratio chi-square uh, test. And uh, essentially what this is doing is testing the overall model fit relative to a null model. So um, you can see right here that we have a p-value that's printed out and we compare that p-value against uh, um, um, our uh, nominal alpha uh, level and um, using kind of a conventional threshold of 0.05 we would say that the model overall is fitting the data is uh, exhibiting a significant uh, fit to the data. Uh, relative to a null model. So you can see that we are evaluating the overall fit and then you know once we've determined that there's an overall fit of the model to the data then we can go down and look at the individual coefficients uh, determine their significance and interpret what these uh, actually mean. Keep in mind that when you're interpreting the coefficients you know the dependent variable is essentially hazard uh, the hazard for relapse but um, but when we are interpreting the coefficients, we're actually uh, um, uh, the coefficients are interpreted as the predicted change in log hazard. So it's a log hazard for every one unit um, uh, increase on the predictor variable. So you can still pretty much just look at the direction, the sign to indicate uh, you know the relationship between uh, the predictor and the hazard. So um, but I, I am letting you know that uh, the units of measurement are in log hazard as opposed to actual hazard. So you can see right here that we have a negative coefficient for the group variable and the group variable is coded 0 for detox and 1 for the treatment group. So given that we have a negative coefficient right here um, we can say then that those individuals that were in the treatment group were at a lower hazard during the observation period of, um, of relapse than those in the detox condition. Um, when we look at the, the symptoms variable, it's positive coefficient, and what that would tell us then is uh, that those individuals who had were at higher levels of psychological distress exhibited greater hazard for, um, for relapse. Then when we look at AA, um, you know, it's coded zero for uh, did not attend, 
versus one for did attend um, AA groups. And so given that uh, we have a negative coefficient right here, we can just basically say that those individuals who attended AA groups were at a lower hazard for um, uh, relapse than those individuals who were um, who did not attend. So um, we could also uh, you know, utilize syntax as, uh, as well. Uh, this is the syntax for carrying out the Cox regression. It's just basically typing in st Cox, which is the basic command. Then we just type in the name of our um, predictors in the model. I also want to note, notice uh, or note to you that uh, in survival analysis uh, lingo, uh, the predictors are generally referred to as covariates or often referred to as covariates, but I tend to prefer the term predictor, so that's what I'm going with. So um, then you'll notice that I asked for NOHR, and so there, there are our results. Um, now, if I did, if I want the hazard ratios, uh, then all it requires is to not include this little uh, piece uh, in our syntax, the comma and that little piece right there. So I can just type in, um, you know, essentially st Cox group um, symptoms. Make sure that you have everything spelled correctly, and enter. And so now we have the hazard ratios instead of just the um, uh, the uh, regression coefficients. Keep in mind too, uh, I, I guess I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but uh, all three predictors using kind of a conventional 0.05 level, uh, all three predictors were statistically significant uh, in the model. So, uh, you know, kind of keep that in mind. Um, looking at the hazard ratio right here, uh, this is just reflecting uh, the changes in hazard uh, or the predicted change in hazard. Um, um, associated with changes on the predictor variable. So it's a, a multiplicative change in the hazard or predicted hazard for every uh, unit uh, change on a predictor variable. So, you know, basically uh, the easiest way to think about this is that a hazard ratio that's equal to one indicates that with, uh, you know, changes or increases on a predictor variable, there's no systematic increase or decrease in the hazard for relapse. A value that's greater than one would reflect uh, that as um, values on the predictor are increasing, there is an increasing hazard. Um, it's associated with increased hazards on hazard for relapse on the um, um, in, um, in the data. And then uh, a value that's less than one is this indicates that higher values on uh, the predictor are associated with lower hazard for um, relapse. So that's uh, kind of a quick and dirty uh, uh, way of thinking about. Uh, what the hazard ratio is actually reflecting.